What's up, buddy? How we doing? Hey, hey. Good. So there is a way to do that that I'm going to email to you because we'll figure that out for next week. And for anybody wondering what I'm talking about, we're continuing a conversation. We're going to try to do this on Facebook Live today. Um, so looking ahead to next week, we may give that a crack again. Um, I just Googled it, and there's like some step-by-step -step instructions. We can try it next week. All right. We got to try it, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm having technical difficulties. So I had to move outside today because I I told you I was we're putting together the studio and the yeah. Murphy we picked spent four hours making that Murphy bed all for it to break the second that I sat on it. So uh I currently have Brutal. my my room studio is just a complete disaster right now so i had to move to the back porch but um, hey let's put it this way for everybody who including myself doesn't live in an area these days where you can sit outside at all really comfortably let alone in a t-shirt right now exactly uh, be you, jealous you've got it made right now be jealous the fact that i can go to my outside back porch um dude Good to see you, man. Uh, welcome back Likewise. to Kleiner Sports Reporters to Knockout Bets Podcast. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for uh, all your continued support. Look at that. Camera doesn't even know what to do right now. Um, we're just super blur. Blurry. We're just super blurry. And we're back in. And we're focusing. And we're there. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, today, we are bringing you... UFC Fight Night, Krylov versus Span, which is really the appetizer that, let's see, what type of appetizer would this be? Maybe like the loaded potato wedges. All right. I, I have a joke here about like, what type of appetizer are you? And like, when you look at a menu, whoever you're with, you ask them like, who, what do you think I am? What do I think you are? And most people that I know can agree that the potato wedges aren't something you order, but you're going to eat. Um, but it's okay. real. But you still eat them, right? It's not like the nachos, which would be like a couple fight nights ago. There was the nachos of next week's card, which is Cyril Gon versus John Jones, which is ever what we all know everyone's excited about. So this is the loaded potato, uh, loaded potatoes. This is what that okay. is. Okay. Right all right. All um, right. So running with that analogy, then what was last week's card? Last week would have been uh, someone also ordered the loaded potatoes again. So we've, we're having two weeks. So all right. So I'm going to disagree a, a little bit. I think this week's card is at least on paper, um, and hopefully in reality too, a little bit better than than last week's card. So if we're saying to me, if this week's card is the potato wedges, last week's card is, oh, I don't know what's what's. We'll say the pretzels. Now, now I'm pretzels failing in my pretzels, in my analogy, but like pretzels with beer cheese. That's was last. Getting week. a cup of soup or something. That's Side salad. That's terrible. Except okay. some people like some people like that stuff. So I don't want to criticize. That's just for my no, personal taste. No, it's this is. The, I'm thinking we're speaking for a majority of people don't want just a cup of soup for an appetizer. So I agree with that. I like that. Um, but before we get into UFC fight, not Krylov versus Span, I do want to talk about. I think a more exciting fight. And I can't believe I'm even saying this, but it is true. I don't know why it's on a Sunday at 2 p.m., but I do know, I know that I just, got an, I just got an email from Duffy's Sports Bar in Fort Myers that they'll be showing it at 2 p.m. So you will see me there, Duffy's in Fort Myers. I will be there. Um, let me know if you want to watch with me. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Um so what, I'm going to totally that disagree that this is more interesting than the UFC card. I mean, I've the celebrity boxing stuff, like, look, I'm not going to knock the hustle. Good for them that, that they're out there making money. Honestly, like, it's super impressive that Jake Paul beat Tyron Woodley twice, knocked him out once, beat Anderson Silva. Like, 
that's impressive. Yes, these guys are old on the downside of their career. Yes, they're MMA fighters and not boxers. But there's something to be said for beating those guys, especially Anderson Silva, even though he's 47 years old. So props to that. Props to making millions of dollars off of promoting yourself well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, either of these guys fights a real boxer, they probably get knocked out pretty quickly. Who do I think is going to win? Honestly, I have no clue. Um, probably Jake Paul, I guess, just because he's been beating some dudes. I mean, I know the other guy is Tyson Fury's brother. I don't really know anything about him, to be honest, other than that. Like, I don't know what his level of competition has been. Um, so, yeah, what do you, what do you I think? I can give you a breakdown of his competition. So, the fighters that he has fought have had a combined record of two and 146 and three. Well, that's pretty terrible. So his last. So he's just crushing fights. Absolute, and he's absolutely like, no knocking points. them out. But then on the other end, Jake Paul's only fought a YouTuber, a basketball player. Um, and a couple a, MMA fighters. A couple MMA fighters. So the line that I really like on this, and I would say. Stay away from the fighters. That- Stay away from the fighters. The fight to go the distance right now is minus 125. I think both of these guys, I think this is going to be a competitive fight. Uh, I know Jake Paul hit Anderson Silva with one of his best shots and still didn't put Anderson Silva away. I think Fury is a good boxer, so he knows how to stay out of danger better than the MMA fighters did. So minus 125, fight to go the distance. That is my that is my pick for. So I'm absolutely mind blown. No, hold on. So tell me, you said that his opponents are like two and a hundred and something. Yeah. Where do it's you bad. even find those guys? It's bad. That's eight, that's terrible. Eight fights, eight fights. He's fought or seven fights. But he's just fighting like absolute nobodies, and he's knocking oh, them out. Holy shit! So I just I went. Went on Tapology and I clicked on one guy just to like just pick the random one. The dude is Owen forty six. Yep, Owen. I mean, is that dude going out there getting like paid to lose? How do you go Owen forty six? Here's another dude Owen thirty five. Wow, I wasn't. Li- oh. I know you were like shocked. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on though. This dude, this dude, he he's way better than the other dudes. This dude actually is ten and one hundred and eleven. <laughs> 10 and 111. There you go. <laughs> so that's more than two wins all combined. But that's oh, 10, anyway. 10. My bad. Your, your point 12, is taken. 12. Sorry. Oh, I, actually, though, if you go to his most recent fight, it looks like he beat a dude who was 11 and 2. So um, I think right. this will be a competitive fight. I think this the, the go of the distance is the line to look at for this one. Stay away from the fighters because I think it's a trap in terms of. Who's gonna you win. don't think Jake Paul can knock him out? Jake Paul's got that power. He knocked out. I Woodley. think I think Fury knows how to being a boxer knows how to stay away from stay out of danger is better than Woodley was going to. That's where I think. I think he knows how to box. So I think he can like Silva. And the reason I say is because Silva got caught with one of Jake's biggest punches of the night, and Silva still, um, still got back up. So. I would say if Fury can just stay out of range, I think he'll be fine. I don't. Fury has knocked out a bunch of Joe Schmoes, but I think he's going to go the distance here. I don't think that he's knocking Jake out. So um, that's how I'm seeing this one go. Cool. All so right. Now that we've alienated our whole audience by talking about everything except what we're actually here to talk about. Yes. Back to what you all, we know you're all dying for. Um, UFC fight night, Krylov versus Span. Uh, the first fight that we're going to be talking about is going to be Rafael Alves, uh, who is the slight underdog coming in at plus 160. He is 20 and 11. He's going to be fighting Nurulo Al- Aliyev, who is minus 190. He's coming in at a perfect 8 and 0. This is a lightweight match to start off our card. Uh, Andrew, how do you think this one's going to break down? 
Yeah, this one is a very interesting fight. And this actually, after a couple of cancellations in the past couple of days, this is going to be the first fight of the night. And this is a banger fight. I mean, we picked this out of all the fights on our card to be to be one of the four most interesting fights. And this is now going to be leading off the undercard if if things don't get shuffled between now and tomorrow. So this is one, I mean, a lot of times, especially if you're a casual fan, you can kind of snooze on the first, you know, three, four fights, the early prelim type fights. Don't skip this one. This one's a really fun fight uh, for a couple of reasons. So Alves can absolutely crack. He can also submit you on the ground. Um, he throws a lot of creative strikes, spinning stuff and, and, um, high kicks and has fought some really good competition. His his last fight out was Drew Dober. He's fought Mark Dia Casey, Islamagulov competitively. This is not your typical debut fight for somebody coming into the FC. Alves is definitely talented. He's definitely he he's live for a finish the whole fight, um, especially early on uh, when he's not tired. He does have. The tendency to gas sometimes a bit because he throws such big strikes um, and, and makes such big movements at times, but uh, definitely is is always live for the finish. Aliyev, he's not Russian, so so let's let's put that up front. But he fights like a Dagestani fighter. He fights like Islam Makhachev. He fights like Khabib. He fights like all these guys. Uh, people like to call him the new Khabib, the little Khabib, the, um, make those comparisons uh, for Aliyev for, with his fighting style. He's undefeated so far. Um, and there's a lot of hype behind him coming into the UFC. I think this says a lot that he's getting Alves in his first fight in the UFC. Um, like I said, not a, not a typical fight for somebody to get uh, first fight coming into the organization. So saying he fights like a dag, saying he fights like Khabib, obviously we know that means he's an incredible wrestler, um, incredible pressure wrestler, relentless with the takedowns, has heavy ground and pound, um, and is decent and can hang on the feet. Uh, I think if he doesn't get cracked early, think it's very likely that that Aliyev takes this one um whether by a, a wrestling grinding decision or perhaps later in the fight finding a, a submission or ground and pound and maybe the late second round or third round uh i think more likely by decision but i'm not going to mess with any of that i just took him on the money line earlier in the week i got minus 160 that's looking at it, that's implied odds of like 60% that he wins this fight. I think he wins this fight around 80% of the time. So definitely liking the, the minus 160 that I got. You still get minus 180, which is about 65% implied odds. I think that's still a good number. Um, I would play Aliyev on the money line all the way up to like minus 200 even. Um, and yeah, that's where I'm at with this one. What do you got? Yeah, I agree with you. I think the only thing you got to look out for is a finish um, by Alves. Uh, but I think overall, in terms of just like the grappling and the overall skills and, you know, the, his fighting style, I think Aliyev, this is a good matchup for him. I think he's just got to stay out of harm's way, uh, fight his fight. Um, and I could see him working into working in a submission um, or a finish here. So um, I could I could really see, see him pulling that out. Um, he doesn't have any subs on his record, uh, but his wrestling style and I think with the pressure that uh, Alves is going to bring him, I think uh, a sub might be might be in the books for that. But I definitely am with you. I do like Aliyev money line. It is creeping up, so get it in now because I'm seeing it right now. It's minus 180, and ESPN has it minus 190. So I'm sure the money's going to keep rolling in, so I would get it now sooner rather than later. I love it. I like it when we're on the same side. Yeah. I mean, last week we had the, the fraud alert with the 23 and 0 guy. I'm blanking on his name off the top of my head, but you could see if you looked close enough that there was a fraud alert on that guy. Aliyev is not that. This no. guy's the real deal. It is possible he lives this, loses this fight because Alves is legit. Um, 
but uh, Aliyev is a guy who's going to have success in the UFC. All right. Next up, we have um, welterweight fight. We have Mike Malo, who is coming at uh, minus 210 favorite. He is 8-1-1 one one against Johan Lenize, who is plus 175. He is coming at 9-1. and one. This is a welterweight match. How is this one going to play out, Andrew? Yeah, so this is the matchup of the Canadians. Um, and these guys thought that they there was very little chance of them getting matched up. And so um, I forget which one of them said it. One of them was talking earlier in the week that they've actually sparred recently, which I think is, is pretty interesting. Um, and depending how that went, that could give one or the other of them a big psychological edge going into the fight having having sparred recently if if one of them was clearly getting the better of that so that's an interesting thing to think about i mean you know unless we see video of that which is highly unlikely there's no way to really know but it's just a, an interesting thought um mallet has eight wins all eight are finishes uh, he's a good technical striker. He can wrestle. He's very, very good on the ground. He's a black belt in BJJ um, and can also get hit a little bit on the feet. His striking defense is is not the best out there. Liness, uh, nine wins, six by finish. He is powerful. He's a little bit wild. He has, similar to Alva's, but obviously different weight class, has a lot of big move. Uh, he's got a heavy, heavy hook. He can definitely put you to sleep if he connects the right way. Uh, he can wrestle a little bit too and seems to, if he comes out hard, have about one round of gas and then really drop off a cliff after the first round if um, he's hanging in there and, and hasn't gotten the finish. So what I love for this fight is I do think Mallet probably gets the win. He's the more tech guy he's the better guy everywhere but he can get hit and Lanes has that power um and so the the bet that i really really like is fight to not go the distance um i took that at minus 286 and parlayed it with a couple of things on next week's card uh and and that's what i really like in this fight like i said i think mallet probably wins it i don't like mallet at minus 225 or, or whatever is out there right now um the the fight to not go the distance is my favorite favorite bet here that's so funny i was literally about to say the same thing I was like, yeah, I really like the fight does not go the distance. I think it's really hard to pick a side because both these guys have a lot of finishes on their records. You know, Mallet's got eight wins all by finish, you know, split evenly four and four. Uh, then, you know, you got Linus who's, you know, nine and one. He's got six finishes himself. I think the danger, though, for Johan comes with Mallet's power. He does have super, super strong hands, and the dude knows how to knows how to find a chin and knows how to knock people out. Um, the value side, though, if you look at it, is definitely on Liness, but that's mostly because this fight's just so wide. I do see this fight being a little bit closer, but I understand why it's where it's at is because Mallet has so many. You know, he's perfect on his finishes. So um, where back to your original point. I love this fight does not go the distance. I really, really like that. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, another angle here that I think could be interesting. The over and under is set at one and a half. I do see this as going past one and a half and being mm -hmm. a finish. Um, and the over right now for one and a half is the underdog at minus one tenth. So that may be even another angle you want to look at is it's still going to get finished, but I do think that it's going to be longer than one and a half rounds, which is a crazy, crazy gamble to be playing in. Um, because when you have a fight to not go the distance, you want it to end early. But I do see this as these two guys could feel each other out for the first round. And then, you know, all you need is two minutes and 30 seconds in the next, and then you win your bet. So uh, I do think you guys... same game parlay doesn't go the distance with over one and a half. You're going to get some, some decent plus odds on that. That's a, that's a crazy that's little bet, a right? Very, very risky bet. Right. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're especially because for... these dudes definitely both have, have multiple ways to finish it in the first round. I just think that these guys know that though. And if you're, if we're already saying that they're sparring each other, they, I feel like they might spend a little bit of time in the first round feeling each other out. Yeah. And when you have fighters that have this many finishes, typically, unless they're Michael Chandler, um, 
they're going to take their time and, tr- and and feel it out. So that's where I could see that happening. But I could also see this thing just being fireworks right off the bat and because it's the UFC. 30-second yeah, KO. You never know. Either way. Either way, yeah. it's going to be a great fight. These are This is a, definitely a great matchup. Um, definitely one the fans are going to get behind. And again, yeah, the battle, the battle for who the top Canadian is. Um, all right, next up, we're moving to the co-main event. It is a middleweight fight. It is Andre Munez who is coming at the big favorite at minus 220. He is 23 and four, and he is fighting Brendan Allen, who is plus 180. Um, he's coming in at 20 and five. Go ahead and talk to me. What do you think this one's going to do? Yeah. I mean, there's not a whole like crazy in-depth breakdown to get into on this. There's kind of two outcomes for this fight, which is, uh, if Muniz can can work his wrestling and, and grappling, he can win a decision uh, by by laying on top of him for at least two out of three rounds, or by finding the submission. Um, and if this thing stays on the feed, it's going to be Brendan Allen all day. Um, it's kind of that simple. There, there's not a, a lot of crazy stuff to get into here. Muniz is an incredible grappler, third degree black belt in BJJ. Uh, Allen definitely has the better striking, uh, has a solid jab, works his combinations decently. Um, Allen, though, is primarily a grappler. Um, He's going to know he has the striking advantage in this fight, and hopefully for his sake, he's going to be smart enough to try to stay off the ground. But I just think when your primary specialty is something – and you are in a cage fight with another grown ass man who's super strong coming after you that more often than not you're going to revert to what your primary skill set is and what you're good at and for Brendan Allen that's grappling and he's just not going to be able to hang with Mooney's in the grappling and so therefore I've got Mooney's to win this um I, I parlayed it early in the week with Tatiana Suarez, got minus 128 on, on those two parlayed together. I got a, a much better line on Muniz than I think is available uh, at this point. I think I got him at minus 175 and looking like right now it's all the way down to like minus 230, minus 235 at most books. I don't know that I would bet it at at minus 235. I think that's um, getting outside of a number that I that I would feel comfortable with anymore. Uh, but I do like Mooney's to win the fight. Um, but wouldn't be shocked if, if Alan finds a way to, to stay on the feet two out of three rounds and, and is able to pull it out. So I agree with you. I think Allen keeps us on the feet, but again, here's what worries me when you have the two guys that have so many wins by submission, right? Allen has 11, Muniz has 15, is when you have guys like that, it almost becomes like two snakes just getting really intertwined, and all it takes is one person to get into a really bad position, um, and I, there could be a possibility that Allen could find a sub there. Um, I do think Muniz overall has the better grappling background. I think, you know, him being a Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy is definitely more dominant, but I do worry that when you have stuff like that, that sometimes weird positions happen. We saw it last week with the Blanchfield fight. It's like we knew that if she could just get into a position that was friendly for her, something could happen. So that is why to Andrew's point, I would stay away from the money line on like minus two by itself. Um, if you're gonna bet out, if you're gonna bet Muniz, um, I would maybe throw him into a parlay or buy finish. I like those two, uh, but I would not bet him by himself on the money line at that odds. Um, if you're looking for yeah. another crazy bet, I really like Allen by, uh, Allen by submission could be a crazy bet if you want to really throw in one of those. Um, but you could go the other way and say Muniz by submission too. So um, I, I think this one's, I think for me, it's one of those ones where I'm probably going to stay away from just because it's so, you're talking about two really, really dangerous men with a lot of finishes on their records. And yeah, one is definitely the better grappler, but 
again, it's the UFC, man. And so it, all it takes is just one bad, bad position. We've seen really good grapplers get put into really bad positions by other decent grapplers. And it just takes, you know, you could see this thing being like a leg lock or an arm bar or something. Just there's so many angles you can look at it here. When you have two guys that have that many submission wins, to me, that makes me want to pump the brakes on really picking a side here on this one. Yeah, I looked heavily into betting Mooney's by decision um, and ultimately decided not to. Um, Brendan Allen is is pretty good on the ground, and I think his submission defense probably holds up. So a, a possible look, if you wanted to, to look at it this way, would be Mooney's by decision. Um, as we're talking this through, I'm even thinking I'm going to go look at at what the line is on that, but this this fight just feels a little squirrely. I mean, all it takes is is Allen being able to stay on the feet, and on the feet, this thing's not going to be close. Um, if it if it stays upright, it, it's going to be Brendan Allen win, uh, whether he ends up getting the finish or or whether he boxes his way to a decision. Whatever it is, um, let's just hope it is not like William Knight's last fight. This is very, very interesting. I might I have love, to... I love how you skipped right over that. Did you not hear me on that? Sorry, go ahead. Say that again. I said, at least we know it will not be like the William Knight fight. We hope so. We hope nothing is ever, ever, ever again like the William as you're, Knight fight. As you're I looking that William up, Knight what, gets, gets what was that? Um, what a waste what I, of what 15 I minutes of my life. I think happened is that he this is just like making up a plausible excuse for him other than like he was throwing the fight to try to win money for somebody um but what i think probably (laughs) happened is that he was taking the first round largely off to try to try to find the range try to download and 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 find his spots to get in which i don't know why you would do that especially when you're the guy with the shorter reach but i imagine that's what he was doing i think his leg just got fucked up in the first round to the point where it came the second round he was like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna download for a bunch of the first round and then i'm gonna explode on him in the second and his leg got so fucked up in the first round that he didn't have the ability to do that and so he's just kind of a sitting duck because he couldn't do much on his leg. Yeah, that was. I mean, his leg was. Definitely That's the only thing that makes sense. To his me. death was leg was definitely compromised. It was a, but wow, what a poor performance. Um, he right, should get you, cut after that. Honestly, yeah. what'd you get for the line on the decision? So this is way better than I thought it was going to be, and I might even have to take a little nibble on this. Muniz wins by decision. I'm seeing a. Plus four fifty, plus four hundred. That is way higher than I thought it would be. Um, and I might take a little nibble on that number. Um, you heard it I was here, thinking folks. that one was going to be around plus two fifty ish. So you heard it, yeah, you heard it here. Knockout best podcast. The nibble bet. That's 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 the <laughs> small, new that's small the new little bet. like the little know, nibbler. Court- quarter of a unit or so on there um you know a little little bet on something that i thought would have much worse odds than it does the little nibbler bet brought to you by knockout bets podcast andrew (laughs) Muniz to go the distance and win by decision um all right that is moving up to our last fight of the night which is the main event this is a light heavyweight fight um Going to be very interesting. Very interested to hear your thoughts on this one. We have Nikita Krylov, who's coming at the big favorite at minus one seventy. He is twenty nine and nine against Ryan Spann, who is plus one forty five, who is coming in at twenty one and seven. Both of these are dangerous, dangerous men. Um, what What do you have for us? How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, um, the way I see these guys, I think Krylov's got Spann covered pretty much everywhere. Um, I think if this goes, the later this fight goes, the more it swings towards Krylov. Um, it, it's definitely to me a spot where you could look at live betting Krylov after the first round, 
definitely look at live betting Krylov if we get to the end of the second round. I don't know if we're going to get there or not on either side, but if we're starting round three, uh, and, unless Krylov is like minus 800 starting round three, I, I probably will be putting a live bet in on Krylov to start round three. Um, wherever the first two rounds have gone, as, as long as Krylov hasn't dominated and isn't a huge favorite at that point. But uh, Span, yeah, we know he has big power. We know he's super dangerous with the guillotine. I think he's got like four guillotine finishes on his record or something like that. So we know that's a, a, a good move for him. Uh, his last five fights have all ended in the first round, win or lose. So we know that uh, he hasn't gone deep recently. Another interesting stat with these guys, striking differential. To the uh, hundredth decimal, um, not the one hundredth decimal, but the hundredth decimal place, um, Ryan Span is even three point four two to three point four two. Krylov almost four and a half to two and a half uh, given to received, and that is a pretty big difference. We know Span carries the power, so obviously that makes up for some of it. But the longer this fight goes, Karlov's going to be able to box him up on the feet. I think he's going to be able to take him down. I think he's going to be able to hold him down. Um, I am not the most confident that I've ever been uh, in Karlov because Span definitely does have finishing power. We've seen it. He can put you out with one shot. Um, and, and he does have submission. So he's got two ways to finish you. Um, that all being said, I, I think Krylov is a vet of the game enough to stay out of all that. If you look at Krylov's losses, his four losses, Jan Blachowicz, Glover Teixeira, Ankolaev, and then he lost to Paul Craig by sub. A lot Which, of guys I don't know Paul if you Craig remember. I don't know if you remember that fight. He was beating the shit out of him, and Paul Craig got him in there. So again, like what I was just saying and, earlier, and Paul Craig caught position. him on the ground. Bad yeah. position. Well, that's Paul Craig, and Paul Craig has proven he can do that to anybody. Um. So but he has gone the distance against Ankalaev. You know, he's gone the distance and won against Johnny Walker. He's gone the distance against uh, Ozdemir. You know, he's he's knocked right. out. Good he's beaten some Gustafson. very very good competition. Yeah. This is this is I think this is the right competition for him um, in that in that division. Um, another thing I like here. Sad note: when we are on the one year anniversary. I f I heard today I was watching the news: the one year anniversary of the Ukraine war starting. Oh shit! This could be a big big moment for him in Ukraine here. Um, I think he's going to have a lot of just raw emotion coming into that. I think he's fighting for his country. Um, I'm on it with you. I really, I, I like Krylov a lot here. Um, I think it's really tough though, when you have a line that wide to how do you, you know, bet that I'll by tell yourself, you how. I'll but, tell you how, but let me hear Krylov inside the distance. Okay. Krylov inside the at? distance. So I bet it at minus one ten a, I like a couple that. days ago. Um, I will tell you in a second what I can find for it right now. If my computer will co I do like with. that. I do like that. But I was going to say, even at minus... This is a five-round fight. Span yep. hasn't been out of the first round in his last five fights. And this is a five-round fight. I don't think it's going to... I don't think it's going to go the distance either way. I think the, the fight to not go the distance bet on this one is like minus 650 and i think it should probably even be higher than that i think one of these guys is getting a finish um and i think karlov is to me clearly the better fighter uh so i'm trying to find where that line is at right now but yeah what i was gonna say is even karlov where he's at he's kind of still with me he's inside that money line range of which i would take take him by himself he's not too far i think when you start getting into like minus 200s i start staying away um but he's not there yet and i honestly i think the money i could see this kind of maybe even moving a little closer i i you know i i, I think definitely get it now where it's at but i could see this thing getting down to like minus 160 minus 150 before the fight starts yeah so 
the lines that I'm looking at right now for Krylov inside the distance, I'm seeing like around minus 125, minus 130, minus 135. So I beat a tiny line movement on that so far uh, to get the, the minus 110. So that's, I mean, this is a couple of times now where I've mentioned that I took took bets earlier in the week and have beat lines that have moved whether a little bit or whether a fair amount uh it's a good place to plug follow on bet mma tips we're recliner underscore report on there those are are my bets i post them as soon as i like click submit on a on a bet on my FanDuel, DraftKings, MGM app, whatever I'm betting on. Uh, the immediate next thing I do is go on Bet MMA Tips and put that bet in. So if you want to catch those when I'm putting them in on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, um, before the, the line movement happens later in the week, sometimes I'm looking ahead to, to future cards. Um, one that I can pat myself on the back for, and we'll talk about this fight next week, so I won't get into that, but... I have John Jones at plus 100. John Jones is like minus 160 at, at most books right now. So that's a, a, a pretty big beat. I mean, I put that bet in, in January. So been sitting on that one for a while, but uh, that's a, a huge um, beat of line movement. So definitely worth following there. Yeah, I think a lot of that came movement came after Cyril Gaon came out and said that he hasn't been training for the fight. Um, which John Jones then was like, I've smell a trap, but don't worry. I've been training. So um, definitely going to be a great fight. Definitely going to be awesome. Why I'm super pumped for next week. Can't wait to talk about next week's card. Um, thank you everyone. Also, uh, if you're also looking for other avenues and other places to get other lines, uh, go and check out bet us where there's a special right now where you can get a uh, hundred, 125% match on whatever your first deposit is. Uh, you can find the link to that in this description, and you can also find it on our Twitter page on all of our posts. So that's bet us. Um, thank you everyone again for watching. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa. My bad. Real, real quick, real quick. Bets. You got to do the, the that's knockout two times in a bets. Row. That's two and times in a row. If, if we have some lottery tickets, so all right, let's, let's, let's knock get them out. in quick. Cause we're running out of knock them out. There you go. Knock them out. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, I was going to ask you to stall so that I had a second. Oh, to, no, I got to look mine. At the card and pick I one. got mine. Go ahead, mine I'm going to go um, with uh, Johan. Johan Linnaeus by knockout. I like that. And you probably get pretty decent pretty decent odds on that, um, given that he's a, a decent-sized underdog. I'm going to go with Nikita Krylov by knockout. Main event. I like it. What about your lottery pick? So lottery ticket, just looking at, at some underdogs that I think are live or have a chance. I think Rafael Alves is live. I wouldn't bet Alves' money line. I think you're going to just get better odds on betting inside the distance or betting first round, um, especially when you're, when you're looking at a lottery ticket. So I'd go Alves either inside the distance or Alves in the first round as part of a lottery ticket. Uh, I personally... I think like Jordan Levitt more than most people this week. And I like Jordan Levitt by sub. So even though you're not getting crazy high odds on that, I think I got around plus 200 or something like that. Um, that's, that's something that I like putting into a lottery ticket for this week. <laughs> Other than that, it's tough, man. It's, it's really, really tough. I think a lot of the chalk is going to hit this week. Um, there aren't a ton of props that I love, but if, if you put those two together with maybe Gabriela Fernandez, who's, who's minus 130 on the money line, I, I, I like her, um, could even throw that Krylov inside the distance in there. If you want to get a four fighter to get your higher odds on a lottery ticket, that, that'd probably be something, something similar to what I'd go with for a lottery ticket. All right. My lottery ticket is coming in at plus 2,300. I'm taking Aliyev, Levitt, Liness, and Krylov, and Dontel Mays coming in at a ten a winya, two hundred and thirty to hundred a winya, twenty three hundred. So that is going to be my lottery ticket bet of the week. Um, thank like you, it. 
thank you all again for for watching. Appreciate all the support. Um, follow us on Twitter for all of our picks at under, recliner underscore report. And as always, remember, keep keep the change. The change.